Welcome to Will It Work. Today we're looking at Astrocade, the professional arcade expandable computer system, also known as the Bally Astrocade. Uh, this kind of got, this system kind of got moved around and the name changed. It started off as like a library computer uh, and, and that's kind of what it was called and then uh, Bally decided it was only mail order or something and then Bally decided they didn't really want to be in this business uh, this home business basically and so because they were kind of wishy-washy on it anyway and then there was this other company called Astrovision which um, uh, bought it and then they um, or they kind of came to an agreement with Bally. They kind of worked together. And, and uh, they, they came out from, uh, um, uh, you know, the, 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 they launched the system, right, as the Astrocade. Uh, and, and on, you know, on this image here, you can say Astrocade Incorporated, the professional arcade. You know, people, you know how things are. When you talk about stuff, you don't call it like, the professional arcade when you're talking to your friends. You just call it Astrocade, even if that's the name of the company. It's just, you just call it Astrocade. That's, that's just how it is. You know, like the 2600, people call it the 2600. It was really the video computers, or the video, yeah, Atari VCS, right? Video computer system or something. Nobody called it that. Uh, you know, hey, we're playing VCS today. Nobody nobody said that. It was a 2600. Astrocade. And, and it was referred to as the Bally Astrocade, even though it was a different company. Uh, but Bally helped build it or manufactured it or something or or licensed it, whatever, whatever, whatever the case may be. <clears throat> so uh, we have the base unit. The base unit actually comes with two games uh, inside of it. I also have a, a game itself, but it's sealed. Uh, but we'll see. Maybe we'll take a look at it. Uh, your control stick here uh, is somewhat unique. You have the trigger button. Uh, on here, and then this actually works as a controller, right? So it has like a, has a kind of a fluid bit of movement, you know, up, down, left, right, diagonal, etc. Uh, it seems to work okay, and then you can also turn it, and it'll work as a uh, as a paddle controller. So it gives you everything in a in a kind of a pistol grip design, uh, which which you know isn't it's not uncomfortable, it's not terrible, it's kind of it's kind of cool, right? Now normally there would be a clear plastic case over the top of this that seems to have been removed from this version that I have here uh, and um, you know otherwise you have a cartridge that goes you know in here and you have a numpad on the base unit for selecting number of players etc. I kind of like it more on the base unit in some respects because it doesn't occupy a big chunk of the controller that you're holding in your hand of course this makes it so it's not uh, uh, something that you can sit back on the couch if you have to come over here and use this numpad. So there's trade-offs, uh, as always. But uh, I probably prefer this over having the, the numpad on the controller because these are just so often not really used. Although, you know, to be fair, this could also, like if you were going to use it uh, as a more advanced uh, controller, it could probably use a second button. Uh, two buttons, lots and lots of games use one buttons. Almost all the 2600 games were one button games, um, but I think two buttons gives you a little bit more features, and Nintendo kind of proved that out, right? So, I'm going to take this out of the box, I'm going to set it up, we're going to switch over to the video side, and if it works, we'll uh, see what it looks like. If it doesn't work, we'll come back here and we'll talk about it. Alright, here we go. Alright, so this is the professional arcade, uh, Bally Astrovision. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to hit reset. So we have a fairly stable signal here, uh, color, which is nice, Bally Manufacturing 1978. Uh, these are the built-in titles, so we have Gunfight, Checkmate, uh, a calculator, and Scribbling. Uh, we'll check to see how these uh, controllers work, uh, or controller, I seem to only have one, um, which, whatever. I don't know if it came with one. It, I'm pretty sure it probably came with two, but uh, I have one. So that is the way. Maybe one day I'll look and see if somebody's selling them individually and buy a second one. And maybe I'll get a glass top for this thing. But, um, yeah. Enter max score. 
of 15. Um, there's no enter on here. There's equals. Yeah, that looks like it works. Okay. I can shoot. I'm not really turning my gun. I, I was trying to twist, but let me try. Oh, I see. I can run around. My gun is always pointed straight up. Although that could be that my potentiometer is not working. Player two, of course, isn't doing anything. So it's not computer controlled. Well, it's really not hard to shoot. So uh, he's so big. Yeah, there's the wagon. I saw something similar on the 2600. It didn't look as good. Boy, it's like a machine gun. Well, I guess I'm out of bullets now. Now let me try um, switching the control over to the other side. And now I can't go left. I can only go right, up, and down. There. Uh, looks like though the if I I have a feeling I should be able to turn the gun you know what I mean as well as run around that does not seem to be functional um, but uh, otherwise looks pretty good I mean graphically it's not too bad I mean I know if you look at like the 2600 it's almost black and white if I recall uh, this is um, it's pretty decent. All right, let's reset. Let's look at checkmate. That's probably some kind of chess, right? Holy smokes. All right, I'm not, I'm not, I'm still in port two, and I think since I did one player, I need to be back on port one. Yeah, I'm the guy in the brown. Hey, look at that, I won. It's kind of like Snake or something. Okay, well, nothing exciting there. Hey, what do you want for free games, though? So you got a calculator. I'm sure this is pretty self-exploratory. Nine times nine. No. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, that's not what I said. I said nine times. Eighty-one. Okay. It's kind of it's kind of a terrible calculator. Scribbling one. I just move this dot around and I can hold the control down and I can draw something. I mean, why not? I guess is the if the turning had worked, I would be able to. Uh, Trying to see if I can change colors of what I'm drawing, but it doesn't seem to. The number pad lets me um, change the background color. Woo! You would think you could use a smaller brush, maybe? My God, this thing's gigantic. Are you tripping on acid, kid? Well, let me tell you, you're not alone. All right. So now I do have a normal game for this called Space Fortress 2012. The box is sealed, but I'm going to go ahead and open it because uh, I have a feeling that uh, this particular game is probably... Uh, 
uh, been resealed at some point. A lot of times people get a sealer and seal things uh, online. Yeah, you can tell there's like some smudges on the box, etc. They seal it to try to get more money out of it. And you kind of know that, it, you know, it's not new. And they're not, they don't necessarily tell you that it's new either. They kind of just uh, give you the impression that it is because it's sealed. But they don't say it's new and sealed. So let's switch it off. All right, we'll insert 2012 Space Fortress. And I slide it in. And we turn it back on. And I guess that's some sort of system check. We'll hit reset. Ah, and see, now we get a new menu item. That's interesting. I would figure it would have just started the game, but instead we get uh, Space Fortress. So let's hit one. One. I don't know. Four. One. Ooh, that's ugly. Oh, it's like Cosmic Arc. If you've never played Cosmic Arc, it's it's similar in that you have this arc and things appear in the four corners and you shoot them and that's kind of like half the game. Uh, and then you um, you will go to uh, a planet and you will, I think it's like, I can't quite remember, I think you have to pick up survivors or something off the planet's surface within a certain amount of time before the arc leaves or you're landing I, I can't quite remember uh and it, but this is very similar to that other than the fact that there's no um that part of the game isn't there boy this sucks like if this was what you had to do on like a friday night was this going to take you like five minutes to get through this and you'd be like boy that's Fucking game's terrible. Um, Space Fortress. I guess you could take turns. All right, let me take some damage. See what happens. Big explosion. And then he, it's just like how many lives is how many bases, apparently. And then the Klingons attack again. So imagine paying 30 bucks for this game. Probably what it was back then, which would be like, you know, fifty dollars today or something. Nineteen eighty-one. That's when that sucker came out. Uh, yeah, not great. So, Space Fortress for the Astrocade Videocade cartridge. So, you so see, even the game, like the unit, the, the, the system itself, the box is called Astrocade, the professional arcade expandable computer system from Astrocade, formerly Astrovision, but then you get the cartridge and it says Astrocade Incorporated Videocade Cartridge. Well, nothing here says Videocade at all, like on the system, right? Uh, so it's like, this is just what, you know, you can just tell that like the whole thing is just confused. They had like a confused launch, confusing name. I did know one kid that had a Bally Astrocade. I never played it uh, when I was uh, um, at his uh, house or, or whatever it was back in the day. Um, but uh, I knew he had it anyway. And so, um, you know, it... it uh, my point is, is that it wasn't like that rare. Like at least I knew one person that had it. There's systems like everybody had like in the, like when I was growing up. So let's talk early eighties, like 1980, 81 or something. Right. Uh, it's like maybe 84, like just about everybody, just about every family had an Atari 2600. If you had kids, you probably had an Atari 2600 and, then you would have people that have uh, like an Intellivision. Like I knew like a couple people, like two, that had an Intellivision. I knew one girl and her family down the street had an Odyssey 2. And we did play that at one time. We went over her house, which we were not really great 
friends with her or anything. I don't know, like, why we were over there. And I certainly don't know why I was over there. She was older than my brothers and sisters. Uh, but I was. And uh, we played in her living room some Odyssey 2. I think maybe they had just gotten it. And they were, like, showing it off or something. Like, hey, we got an Odyssey 2. They had a whole bunch of cartridges. We played something that resembled Demon Attack. Might have been Demon, Demon Attack. I don't know if they made it for that or not. But, um, and then Don Cease, who's been on the radio show, uh, as, you know, Don the Hate Cease, um, he had a Vectrex. He also had a ColecoVision. Uh, although we played those later in life. I started hanging out with Don around 1986 uh, or so, maybe 85. Uh, and so um, that was a little bit later when the game crash had already happened and people were, uh, you know, no longer playing um, games on dedicated systems. They had all moved off to home computers. And I had a friend that lived down the street named Sujat Shaw. He was Pakistani. And he had a VIC-20. And so I got introduced to the VIC-20, and uh, we went. We used his modem to go online, and this was probably right about 1982 or something. Can't quite remember. But we went online, and we uh, there was like a hospital that had a BVS, but I to, to this day I could not tell you if it was a legitimate hospital or if it was just a bulletin board system that was called, you know, a hospital type of thing. I kind of went over there with a uh, a nerdy friend of mine. His name was also Kevin, and uh, he was more interested in what this was all about than I was. I was like looking at it like, well, where's the games, you know? Uh, but they wanted to go online with this bulletin board system and, and, and see what that was all about. So I thought that was kind of interesting that they could, you know, go online and talk to another computer with their computer. But I didn't own a computer at that point in my life. So all of this stuff was all kind of new to me. Uh, and um, so uh, what is this cable? Looks like an extra cable here. It's like a, another switch box with another cable in this box, but the one switch or the one cable is mounted to the system, so I don't know why there's an extra cable in here, but okay. This box needs some tape. But uh, yeah, so um, then that kid, uh, Sujat, we didn't go over his house very often because when his dad was home, he didn't like to have anybody over in the house, but they were nice people. And then uh, the, the Kevin kid, he had a Commodore 64, and he had a very early Commodore 64 uh, when they were really kind of expensive uh, right out the gate. It would have cost like over $1,000 today for a Commodore 64 at the time that he bought it. Uh, and he would play games on his Commodore 64, and uh, I, eventually, I eventually bought that Commodore 64 off him for a little pittance, but it was much, much later. Uh, yeah, and so, um, you know, we play lots of Commodore 64 games, and, you know, like I said, and then I had a TRS-80 that the kid gave me, and I would write my own software on there, because I didn't have any games or solid-state storage or anything for it, uh, and there was no real, at that moment in life, there was no real piracy of, uh, or anything, although, you know, the Commodore 64, that would change rather quickly. Uh, and um, consoles were just kind of dead. But, you know, in terms of, like, some of the other consoles, like, like, I didn't know anybody that really broke out the Pong system or anything. Nobody was like, hey, man, you want to play some Pong? Like, that, that nah, nope. I'm not saying it didn't happen somewhere, but it didn't happen for me. Uh, I just never really ran into anybody that was in the Pong. Now, that being said, we would go out to California, and uh, I think I told this story. We had a, I had a friend, uh, my brother's friend that lived across the street from where my mom lived when we would visit her in California every summer. And he had an Ultra Pong that was broke. And he called Atari and got it replaced. 
we never played it because it was broke and then he got it replaced. But we didn't play it when he got it because by then we had flown back to um, Ohio. But uh, so there was at least one person that, you know, some memory of mine where, you know, uh, someone mentioned Pong. And of course, we purchased uh, a Pong system, but it was defunct. And I believe it was uh, um, an Odyssey version of Pong. Uh, I think it was like an Odyssey 200 or something, or maybe a 300. Uh, but anyway, just kind of nostalgia there. But yeah, Valley Astrocade, uh, it was around, you know, but it wasn't a big deal. It's just like all of these systems just had sort of like these kind of.